on the count of three. One, two, three. Wow. So while I do a little building here, I just thought I'd mention that I'm going to be getting into RF Tools Dimensions today, which is a mod that allows a whole bunch of customization over dimensions by way of dimlets. Um, I'm really only going to be getting into the basics today because I'm trying to get some dimensional shards, which are very rare in the overworld, but are a lot more common in RF Tools Dimensions. And dimensional shards are used to improve RF Tools machines. So I created some hallways down here on um, this third level I built. Um, messed around with chisels and bits for a little bit. It's actually the first time I've ever done chisels and bits, so I, I mean, I think everything turned out okay. But I made a little room branching off here with a crafting grid that I kind of attached to my system above ground. So I have access to all my items here, and finally going to get to crafting all the stuff needed for RF Tools Dimensions. And really, you only need two things to get started out with. And I will be creating the most basic dimension possible, so much so that I'm really just leaving it up to chance, hoping that I get a world that will contain ores so that I can get the dimensional shards. So first off, the dimensional inscriber. And then second, the dimension builder also need an empty dimension tab and then i'm just going to grab my matter receiver and transmitters that i stole from the forest as well as the dialing device and also from the forest a uh, power cell so i'll get these things set up and show you what they do when it's finished
Okay, I've got everything set up. I set my receiver and my transmitter in such a way that looks pretty cool, I think. But I've got my inscriber, builder, and the dialing device here. So, first thing you should do, put your dimensional tab in your inscriber. I'm going to name it um, World 1. And then just store. We don't need to put any dimlets or anything in it yet. Which, I mean, I haven't even described what a dimlet is yet, but trust me, we'll get into it later. So, this is a realized dimensional tab now. You can see it's going to cost 1,000 RF per tick while it's being created. And to maintain it, it will cost 10 RF per tick. Which is why I attached my energy cell directly up to the dimensional builder. So now, we just toss this in here. It'll take a little bit of time to start building the dimension, and I'm going to take it out. So it's got 10 million RF in it currently. Well, 9 million now. And the reason I took it out so fast is because I may not like this dimension, and I really don't want to fill the entire tab up if I'm not happy with the dimension. See, if I put it in there, it'll start charging it up. But I'm just going to keep this on me. And now I can go to my dialing device and dial it to world one. And I've got my charged porter here, so I really don't have to worry about getting back. I'm going to get my air sigil on hand. And we'll see what we find. Okay, it's, uh, it just looks like a whole lot of snow. Yeah, there it is. Here's the matter receiver. Yeah, it just looks like a bunch of snow, really. There's stone, though, so that's good. I see a lot of Endermen in the distance. And this is what I was afraid of. Okay, well, I mean, at least there's mineable things. But really, it's just like a giant cavern world. I mean, it's pretty cool looking. So I'm just going to run around and look for some dimensional shards. So I think I actually have something wrong. It looks like it's, this is using 1000 RF a tick. Maintenance cost. I'm not really sure. But what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to deconstruct this dimension because I'm not happy with it whatsoever. And we're going to try to get a better dimension. But what's wrong with this is if I just go ahead and create this dimension. It's the same exact dimension. It has the same dimension ID. See that? So we actually have to create a digit dimlet, which is one of the only craftable dimlets. So we can change the ID of the dimension so we can get a new world. So it's actually going to cause the dimension to require more RF per tick, but that's okay. So if we store this. We'll call this World 2. Now see, it, um, it doesn't say the ID yet, but it will. Start building it. So this one's maintenance cost is 640 RF per tick. And you can see the world ID is 3 now. I'll just snatch this. And we actually have to dial in to our new dimension now. See what we get this time. Hopefully something better. Okay, it's snow, and it seems like we're actually, we're actually on Y level 60 this time. So hopefully this is better. Now I'm wondering if this is one, if this is one of those dimensions where it's night all the time. I'm going to see what happens if I try to sleep. There's mobs everywhere though. Yeah, it looks like it's night all the time here. We just got our first dimensional shards. I wish I would have mined it with this drill, because this is the fortune drill. But look at that. Dimensional shards. If I get enough, I'll be able to have a little bit of control over the next dimension that I create. So I'm going to mine around and look for some more of these. I really love how big the yield is for the dimensional shards. It's really nice. So yeah, this is indeed a floating island world, it seems. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, definitely not what I'm looking for. 
So I've returned from mining as many dimensional shards as I possibly could, and I'm actually going to deconstruct this dimension. And we're going to create another dimension. How many did we get? We got 36. So that's plenty to make the dimlet that I want to create. So actually, first, I'll craft a material stone dimlet, three dimlet templates, and then a terrain flat dimlet. And then here's this dimlet called the effect dimlet, and it says none, which means there will be no negative type effects in our dimension. And the dimensional inscriber will put material stone and then terrain flat. So that's just going to say that it's flat terrain made of stone. And then we'll put the effect dimlet in. I'm not even going to use the digit dimlet. Don't even need the digit dimlet anymore because. These dimlets themselves create a new dimension ID. So if we store it, it says this is going to cost 16 RF per tick to maintain. So I'm actually going to leave this one in the builder. You know what? I didn't even name this one, but you know what? That's fine. So hopefully this is at least all right. Okay, so this dimension has the ID of four. What am I doing? So we'll dial in to this one. And hopefully. We finally get a somewhat decent dimension. It's not going to be any negative effects, anything like that. Okay. This is nice. And we're on level 64. That's normal. I think I actually found a decent dimension at last. One that we can maybe even build a quarry in. I'm going to dig down a little bit and see what I find. Remember what I said about this being a normal dimension? I think I was a little bit off with that assumption. I see some dimensional shards down there, so at least we know this dimension has the shards that we need, but I think, I think we should be okay. It's gonna fly down there. Oh, okay. I found a little structure here. Maybe we'll find some dimlets. Oh, I see some. Nice. Finally. So we got some of these things. Those are pretty cool. Now let's see what these are. We've got a material nether rack. Dimensional cross two block. And this type of <laughs> wood plank. I'm kind of eager to explore some more, so I'm going to explore around and see what I find. Oh, look, there's another one right there, right when I said that. Okay, I'm done messing with those guys. They're going to get on my nerves, but oh no. This is, this is too much. I see another one over there. Okay. I'm going to loot this building, and then I'm going to escape, and then show you what I picked up. On the count of three. One, two, three. Wow. That is the most slimes I've ever seen in my life. I got a cold taiga biome dimlet. A dirt dimlet. Ooh. Yeah, see, look, all these are a stack of zero, so that's... I feel like that shouldn't be happening. Wow, this is crazy. Molten Cobalt. That's pretty good. Looks like the world just decided not to finish this canyon here. Actually, I think I'm going to start silk touching these. Because if you get enough, you can actually create your own dimlet, which you can then use to create a world that has terrain made out of dimensional shard ore. 
Okay, I'm back and I've gathered a whole bunch of dimlets, none of which I'm going to be using at the moment. Now, one thing I'm going to make here is an activity probe. And when placed in any dimension, when a player isn't in it, it will stop using RF. Just place this down right here. Look at that, we're using zero RF per tick now, so only when we go in the dimension will it require RF. But we're actually going to be removing that here soon after I get my quarry made, because we're going to want the world to be chunk loaded anyways, so that thing is just temporary. First thing, the builder block from RF Tools. Next, a shape card which can be, then be made into a quarry shape card. I don't quite have enough to create a silk quarry, but I can make a fortune quarry. So there we go, we have a fortune quarry card that we can then use in the builder. And then one more power cell for wireless power, which will also require another power cell card. And then I believe, yes, I have another ender chest. And then I actually am going to make a timer because this builder is incredibly fast. And I kind of want to slow it down and have it only operate every time it receives a redstone signal. Okay, so I, I think that this is everything required. So I am going to remove this. I'm going to... Map out the, this chunk here, and then we'll set up the builder. Okay, I've mapped the chunk out here, and I'm going to set the builder up in a way that ensures that the chunk that it's in is always loaded. Like that, with the power cell branching off of it, and the inner chest right on top of it. Um, shift right click the builder with the fortune quarry shape card, and then we're going to dig down. You, we need to define it corner to corner, top to bottom. Seems like I was actually doing things a little bit wrong. All we need to do is define these corners here. And then you can actually set the Y level. Toss that in there. We can see that it's going to mine these areas. It's kind of buggy right now because the snow is interfering with it. But either way, I can take this out and tell this to mine. I'll just say like 128. Okay, now it's got this blue box here. Okay, so the area goes down to the bottom of the earth. Everything should be good. Now, what I'm going to do is just set up a timer here. Oh, I always place these things down wrong. Set up a timer, we'll say... Whoa! Okay, 200. Okay, one thing I did wrong, we need to make sure that we create the clearing quarry because this one is going to replace all blocks with the dirt. Okay, I got what I need to upgrade this fortune quarry to the clearing fortune quarry. Also, I'm going to set this to a solid box instead of just a regular old box. Okay. So it is working, and it's mining every two seconds. So this to one second, actually. Look at that. Very cool. You can even turn the block destruction sound off, which is cool. Yes, that's, that's more like it. So that's probably eaten through my power. And it's filling up my chests a whole bunch. So we definitely want to leave it at something like maybe every half a second. So all we're missing now is a chunk loader, which I forgot to make. And then set my chunk loader down, set it to one chunk, and it should only be loading this chunk right here. The machines will stay loaded as well as 
the area that the quarry is mining. And then actually what I'll do is I'm gonna go grab that matter receiver and connect it up to that power cell. And I'll just put that right there. And then I can link my charge porter to it. So the quarry has reached the bottom of the earth and we still have a lot of power left in these crystals. So I'm going to expand the quarry. Okay, perfect. So those are now chunk loaded. Put this back in here and it will start working again. It's working its way down. Okay. Oh, wow. So it looks like it actually works a chunk at a time. So next time we'll set up some sort of automatic ore processing system so that we don't have to worry about processing the ores ourselves. And I really want to look into better power generation. So I think I'll look into that next time as well. Or at least a more renewable power generation. The power, my power generation right now is really good. It's just, it's not completely automated and I really like automating everything so that should be a lot of fun. One other thing I should mention is that this pack is now available to download on the curse launcher. Um, the link to it is actually in the description as well but that is it for today. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.